Glad that you guys are here. Is it good to be on God's good side or bad side? Good side. What's it like to be on God's bad side? I don't want to know. We don't want to be there. We don't want to be there. How about uh, these guys doing a good job of getting on the good side or the bad side? Dear Santa, you better bring my pony this year or there will be consequences. Uh, good side, bad side. How about this? Dear Tooth Fairy, I lost my tooth on the 23rd of October. Now it is November 12th. I lost my tooth. It sounds like another tooth in the pizza. I lost both today. You owe me $1 not to be hard, but I need my money. I think this is the mom from Scott. Uh, thank you for the amazing uh, squirt gun that I will shoot you with. Nah, I missed it by that much, huh? Um, I hope you get a lot of uh, presents and uh, happy Christmas uh, and you are fat. I don't know if you can read that. Yeah, start it off good. Start it off good. Uh, dear mom, uh, thank you so much for uh, thank you so much for being my mom. If I had a different mom, I would punch her in the face and go find you. Aww. Oh, how sweet is that? That's a good one, mom. I love you more than rainbows. I love you more than blue skies. I love you more than buttercups and wings of butterflies. I love you more than cow. Oh, that's a lot of love. Got a whole lot of love. That was my Elvis, not my Led Zeppelin. Whole lot of love, actually. I love you more than cow. It's, it's good to be on Mama's good side. It's good. And by the way, Mom was here this morning. I think, I think they, they snuck out and headed back home. You know, Mom gave us a scare here the last few days. Had a heart attack and, wow, pretty scary. you have any idea how much time we have left before Jesus comes for us? I have no idea. I mean, the rapture could happen. Uh, we could slip away into eternity. And we want to make sure as much as we can that we're on God's good side, not on His bad side. huh? Proverbs 3, you know, we're, we're reading through the Bible in your... Uh, in your study guide, in your uh, program, uh, there's a place to tell you what we're singing about and what we're talking about. It gives you the, the passages and a place what we're reading about. If you're reading uh, through the Bible with us, uh, there's a simple reading plan, and, and we're taking our talks, our, our sermons, our messages from the passages that uh, you guys are reading, that we're all reading together. Uh, I chose Matthew this morning and, and Proverbs, so that's, that's why we're here. This is one of your uh, readings. I think this is the reading for today, I think. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 33. The Lord's uh, curse is on the house of the wicked. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Not a good thing. Is that his good side or bad side? That's his bad side, yeah. The Lord's curse is on the house of the wicked, but he blesses the home of the righteous. Good side, bad side. Uh, duh, that's a good thing, yeah. Uh, he mocks proud mockers. Uh, I think he's mocking there. Yeah. He mocks proud mockers. He scorns the scorners, what he's saying. But he shows favor to the humble and to the oppressed. 35, the wise will inherit honor. Is that good or bad? That's good. But fools only get shame. Is that good or bad? Well, that's bad. You want to be on God's good side or bad side? In this passage, and, and actually all through Proverbs, God gives us uh, uh, good advice, a good um, uh, direction, good uh, guidance uh, to help us make decisions. We talked at the 830 service about how important it is for us to fill up the sponge of our life when we don't have the squeeze on. Because when life puts the squeeze on you, guess what comes out of the sponge of your life? Well, whatever you've been putting in. Uh, I told everybody about the, the guy who led me to the Lord, you know, my crazy friend Carl. He's with Jesus, and so I can gossip about him. I tell you that every time. That's, I always say that as a preface before I tell you something bad about the guy who led me to the Lord. When that guy wasn't preaching Jesus to me, and we, when we weren't planning bank robberies, uh, the guy had a mouth on him. I mean, he could cuss better than a high schooler. Not that high schoolers can cuss, but if they could. This guy was, he just, uh, you've heard me say this, he, he hated everything. He, poor guy, he was the most miserable guy probably I've ever met. He hated life. He, he hated work. He just, he hurt all the time. He just, everything was just, and, and, and all the emotional oh, worked out into his body. And the guy had so many physical maladies, so many physical problems from all the emotional ugh, that he was living through. This guy had a mouth on him. Actually, his mouth was only that big, but the words that came out were that big. He led me to the Lord. After I got saved, I thought, he'll shut up now. I don't have to listen to him. And he, he started talking. He started discipling me. I don't know if he knew the word discipleship. But now that he got me to Jesus, now he was trying to help me become more like Jesus. And he was still preaching Jesus to me eight hours a day, five days a week. When he wasn't preaching Jesus to me, and he wasn't planning bank robberies with me, he was cussing. And I got to the place where I had so many bad words floating around in my head that whenever something happened, they were in my head. I was trying to live for Jesus. And I got to the place where I was afraid that if I ever got put under pressure, when, you, when life puts the squeeze on the sponge of your life, what comes out? 
all the stuff I've been putting in. And I, I finally physically had to tell him, I, I can't work with you anymore. And I quit working with a guy who led me to the Lord because he was a bad influence. <laughs> kind of like hanging out with your pastor, huh? bad influence. Find, find better company to hang out with. If the people you're around are always complaining, always complaining, always complaining, always complaining, always complaining, and you're happy, you're a happy person, you're a happy person, and they're always complaining, always complaining, always complaining, guess what you're going to start doing pretty soon? You're going to complain about them. Because pretty soon you're just around it, and, and it just kind of comes out. Try to fill up the sponge of your life with the stuff that you want to come out before life puts the squeeze on you. Proverbs tells you how to live that life. Proverbs is so simple. Don't do this, do this. But it's so simple, it's hard, you know? We're not, not doing it because we don't understand it. We're not doing it because it'll change our life. God gave us the Proverbs to give us guidance, to give us wisdom, to give prudence to the simple, the Bible says. The Proverbs have a lot to say about progressing in the faith. Uh, Proverbs 1.22, let me give you an overview of Proverbs, okay? When you're reading through Proverbs, you can look for categories. It's so simple. Uh, it's simple enough that even a caveman can understand it. How old is that commercial? Gee. Proverbs 122, how long will you who are simple love your simple ways? How long will you, will you mockers delight in mockery? And how long will you fools hate knowledge? Now, let me give you a quick little, uh, as, as we look at the next slide, look at the simple. The word simple, uh, it, it literally means open-minded. Now, that sounds like a good thing. But when you think about the word open-minded, literally means open door. Duh. Um, you know, when we had our girls, Hannah and Lacey, uh, we had a pet door for them that was as big as the door, you know, and they'd go in and out freely. It was an open door so that they could go out whenever they wanted or they could come in whenever they want. Well, Hannah and Lacey are gone, and now our, our nephew Chester, Chester the, I don't know what Chester is. He's a big, black, scary dog that <coughs> loves me. He gave me a big old hug this morning, scratched me. <laughs> Looks like I was shaving my eyebrows and missed. He, he hugs us, gives us a big old hug with his big old rough paws, and he's loving on me this morning. Well, Chester doesn't like using the pet door, so he just lets us know. He's a pointer with his body. So Auntie taught me, when he does that, just let him out. How about we just tell him to lie down? She look at me. Because puppies are more important than whatever you're doing right now, Tony. So I get up and I let him out. Well, in just a minute, okay, so get up, open the door, we let him in. I wish he'd use the pet door because it's open-doored, yeah? To be open-minded means to be open-doored. That means things can come in and you can learn. But if you're open-doored, guess what else can happen? You can also get dumber because things can come in and things can go out. Now, it sounds kind of silly because it doesn't seem like you're going to lose knowledge. But the idea is just as easily as you can learn good things, you can learn bad things. You can pick up the wrong habits. You can hang out with people that you think you can trust, people that you love, people that you really care about. And maybe they don't mean it, but they're teaching you the wrong things. To be simple is to be, at best, incredibly sensitive and teachable. At worst, gullible and dumb as a bag of rocks. Or is it hammers? A bag of rocks and hammers, whatever's dumber. But simple is not bad. Simple is, is very teachable. Mockers. What's a mocker? Do we like mockers? Yeah, it's basically everything in the teenage years. Not really. <laughs> but, but you know this? Have you ever seen this? I don't know if you can see my face. Oh. It's a little bit with the mouth and a little bit with the eyes. They can do it without sounds too, just the eyes. And parents always, don't roll your eyes at me. I'll, I'll poke those eyes out. Come here. Come on. Do that, do that over your clothes so I can reach you. Yeah. Mockers, mockers uh, are telling you where the simple really don't know anything, mockers think they know everything. You know, like preachers. Ask me a question. If I don't know the answer, I'll make it up. You know, okay, that's different. Our attitude is different. A mocker, a scorner, they think they know everything. They think they know everything. They think they know They've got an answer for everything. But it's not just that they have an answer for everything. They've got an attitude to go with the answer for everything. Yeah. How long will mockers delight in mockery? The simple, they're okay. They're sweet. Purecito, you know, you want to pat them on the head. and oh, You're so stupid. Mm. You know, you love them and they're teachable and they're sweet and oh, it's so nice. When they get to the place where they're mocking, that's, that's a scorner. 
The simple, they really don't know a lot. The scornful, they think they know everything. The fools, they think they know more than God. The fool hath said in his heart, there is no God. The fools hate knowledge. They don't want to be taught. Now, you can have a fool who's in the world, and they have an, an incredible amount of knowledge. They have a vast ken. They have a huge bucket of knowledge. They know a lot of stuff, but they don't know this. And this is God's perspective. And from God's word, there are the simple. They don't know anything. And the mockers, they think they know everything. And the fools, they think they know more than God. Now, where do you think you want to be to be on God's good side? Well, closer to simple, not gullible, but teachable. Where do you think you don't want to be? Because you don't want to be on his bad side. Well, you don't want to move toward mocker and fool. Again, people who know things are not necessarily in bad shape. They're people who think they know everything and they've got the attitude to go with it. They're not going to let you teach them. I know what I know. And religious people are the worst. I know, I is one. God wants us to stay on his good side and stay away from the bad side. Okay, so you kind of get this? Okay, don't look up at the screen. Just look at me. What are the three, uh, what, what is that, that three-step progression going in the bad direction? Simple is okay. You go from simple to what? Scornful and then to stupidful. I made up that word. Thank you very much. You see it up there? The simple, the scornful, the stupidful. There is no such word except in heaven everyone's going to say, remember when you were stupidful and then you got saved? Oh. Okay, so say the, say the three with me. This is the progression in the bad direction, the simple, the scornful, and then the stupidful. You'll remember that one all week, <laughs> stupidful, <laughs> stupidful. And then you're a mocker when you go, because <laughs> you're thinking about me when you're rolling your eyes. Oh, okay. The simple, the scornful, the stupidful. That's going in the bad direction, right? What about in the other direction? Well, well, these people, I guess I ought to stay there. These people are those who walk by foolishness. You know the Bible says we got to walk by faith? The stupidful, the scorners and the stupidful, these are people who walk by foolishness. They don't think they're being foolish, but they do everything they do to please themselves. Maybe they do good things. They're not just always doing bad things, but the point is they do it to please themselves. This is how a person becomes a mocker. And when they get to the place where I don't care what you say, God, I'm going to do what I'm going to do. Then they move beyond scorner to stupidful. Does that make sense? These are people who walk by foolishness, meaning they do everything they do to please themselves. Even if it's a good thing, it's, it's, it's why they do it. It's not so much what they're doing. It's why they're doing it that's the problem. Okay, uh, now, now people know us. People watch us. People listen to us. They know what we love, don't they? They know who we love. Uh, kids were given a, a, an assignment. Uh, what is your mom like? Well, my, my mom likes drinking wine. Okay, not necessarily bad. Sinner. Yeah, it's bad. But of all the things the kid could have said, this is what the kid said. My mom likes drinking wine. How about the, the next one? This is my mother, and this is what she does all day. She watches Ellen. <laughs> yeah. Now, little kindergartner, little first grader, of all the things that pop into their minds, they know, they know. I know this is just one little thing. It's nothing. But our kids know us, and our kids don't have to be little. They can be grown. They can be old people like my kids. Our kids know us. I, they, don't know, they don't know us precisely, but you know, people, people get a sense for who they think we are. We have a reputation. You know, when you get all spiritual, we have a testimony. It's just a reputation. You have a reputation for being a God lover or being a person who's in love with yourself. You have a reputation for being a, a, a blesser, somebody who just, every time they open their mouth, they try to encourage people. That's not me. And there are people who, they have a reputation for every time they open their mouth, they, they just complain and whine, and that's kind of me. It's good to evaluate. Wow, is that me? I don't think so. Is it? No. And then you start thinking, oh, yeah, I did. No, oh, but I don't do that all the time. Yeah, no, that's, oh, oh, now I just mocked. Sorry. Oh, I did it again. You don't have to drive yourself crazy. Don't get neurotic. But just because everything you did yesterday maybe was okay, maybe it's not so okay today. Maybe it was okay for me to mess up my diaper and needed to be changed yesterday, but maybe today not so good. Maybe when I was two months old, but when I'm 20, not the same. You know what I mean? Some things are okay for a little one, for a baby. 
Some things are not so okay when you get older. Maybe it was okay for me to do things before I realized that maybe God isn't thrilled when I do this. Or maybe it's okay for me to do it. In the Lord even, I have freedom. But maybe it teaches the people around me that they can go me one better. I can have a drink, maybe they can have two. I can have a glass, maybe they can have a toke. I don't know what that is, I read that in a book. <laughs> Dad, remember, it's Father and Son Day, not Father sleeps on his bed day. Understand, this day, me with Father, not this day, you on bed going like a... <laughs> cutting Z's. Huh? Yeah. <clears throat> we have reputation. Kids low, know us. They, we, we grow up and they find out the things uh, that we think are very important, how we prioritize. Uh, is this uh, Eric and mom? This is a, a letter to Eric and mom by the cookies. Eric and mom, do not take because mom has a butt problem and Eric takes too much. I don't know what the butt problem is, but... Uh, <laughs> But evidently, the kid knows that mama has a problem and that Eric takes too much. Yeah? Kids know us. Now, the kids in our lives aren't necessarily two and three and five years old. The kids in our lives may be the next door neighbor. They may be 50 or 60 or 70 years old. But God has them in your lives, and you can influence them for good or evil. You can influence them and bring them closer to Jesus, or you can make them not want to be like you. I know I didn't want to be a Baptist. When people started preaching to me, I kind of fell in love with Jesus early on. I never hated God. I never hated Jesus. just didn't realize I could get as close to him as, as, as the Bible teaches. But I knew when religious people started talking to me, I didn't want to be like those Nazarenes who used to invite my mom and dad to church all the time, and they were sweet people. I didn't want to be like that crazy Baptist, Carl, who was trying to get me to church and get saved, whatever that was. I didn't want to be a Baptist. I'm not sure I want to be one now. It's too late, huh? Baptist preacher. Baptist had a reputation, and it wasn't precise. I just knew in my mind what Baptists were. I didn't know. thought I knew. But the Baptist I knew gave me an idea of what Baptists were like. Charismatics the same. Nazarenes the same. Catholics the same. Preachers the same. We, we get an idea. It, it may not be correct. It may not be precise. Do everything you can do to give people the right impression of who you are because people are going to pick up on our we think they're subtle uh, characteristics subtleties of our life they're big and glaring to people who are watching uh, the, the the nazarene family used to invite my mom and dad to go to church all the time uh, those guys love the Lord. I mean, I found out after I got saved, those guys love the Lord. They love the Lord. And, and they were willing to, to go out of their comfort zone to invite people who didn't know the Lord to come closer. And they used to pray for my mom and dad. They used to pray for our family. Their little six-year-old girl used to pray for this sixth-grade kid that she saw in the front yard. I'm going to pray, Mom, that he'll get saved. Six, seven years later, I did. Thank you, Terry. Thank you, Terry. Thank you for little girls who prayed for crazy old sixth-graders. And for people like Carl Dawson, who didn't like me, but he was in love with Jesus in spite of his messed up life. And he kept telling me how to get saved. He kept telling me how to get saved. He kept telling me how to get saved. I wanted to be like those people. I still didn't want to be like them. When the Nazarene friend uh, who, who invited my folks all the time, I remember he grew a mustache. Now, I still wasn't saved. I'm now... Uh, 10th grade, maybe 11th grade. And he's a Christian, I guess. He's a holy roller. That was anybody who believes in God and is not a Catholic. That's, that was my category, holy roller. And he's inviting my folks to come to church, and he grew a mustache. And I remember thinking, just as clear as can be, I thought he was a Christian. I know. Because I had an idea in my mind that Christians would never grow facial hair. I don't know where I got that. Mel? Oh, wait. Wait. <laughs> I don't know where I got that idea. People have weird ideas about what life is about. I'm just telling you, do everything you can to give them the right idea about what it is to be a Christian. And sometimes you have to stop doing a good thing. Sometimes you have to back off from the privilege of doing something that's okay to go above and beyond to help them see that somebody who loves Jesus loves Jesus more than they love themselves. So the progression again, there's in the bad direction, the simple, the scornful, and the stupidful. Say those with me. The simple, the scornful, and the stupidful. Going in the good direction, you have the simple and the smart and the spiritual. Now you start from the same place. Now we're born sinners, but we're born teachable, kind of. Yeah. If we can go in the bad direction, 
It, it, not just babies. Today, from today, you you'll leave here in a minute, and you're going to be closer to scornful, stupidful, or you're going to be closer to smart, spiritual, based on the decisions you make here just in the next couple of minutes. So say the bad progression with me again. Simple, scornful, stupidful. Say the good progression with me. Simple to smart to spiritual. Okay. Uh, Proverbs two verse one. My son, if you accept my words and store up my commands within you, turning your ear to wisdom. Have you ever watched a deaf guy? That would be me. Have you ever watched a deaf guy when he can't hear something real well? What do they do? Back in the old days, we'd have those big old horns look like a cornucopia. And, hey! Right? You ever seen those old movies, old cartoons? Hey! Yeah. Because we're trying to hear. We lean into it. That's what he's talking about. Just like a person who's hard of hearing leans into the sound, lean into my truth. My son, if you accept my words, store up my commands within you, turning your ear to wisdom, apply your heart to understanding. Listen to God's word and then try to do it. Verse 3, indeed, you call out for insight, cry aloud for understanding. Help me, teach me, God show me. Verse 4, well, if you look for it, if you look for wisdom, the same way you'd look for money. Have you ever looked for quarters in the couch? And you find a dollar? You ever found a five? Twenty? No? Going in the wrong direction. I was going to hit you up for money. You guys are smart. You're not going to answer. If you look for wisdom the same way you look for silver, you search for it the same way you'd search for a hidden treasure, then you will understand the fear of the Lord. How many people search for wisdom? I mean, maybe you like reading books. Maybe, you, maybe you, you're into trivia. Maybe you're crazy like me and you, you, you love watching conspiracy videos because conspiracy videos, they just stretch your mind. They stretch your thinking. But God's not just talking about getting smarter. He's talking about becoming more spiritual. So you're not just going to lend your ear to more knowledge. You're going to lend your ear to godly knowledge. You're going to lend your ear to wisdom. Bend your ear. Lean your ear toward. If you cry out for wisdom, if you cry out for knowledge, then you'll find the knowledge of God. Verse 6, for the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth will come knowledge and will come understanding. So the progression in the good direction is from the simple. You get smart and then you get spiritual. Now, what, what, what's the distinction between simple and smart and spiritual? Well, first of all, big picture, these are people who don't walk by foolishness. These are the people who walk by faith. That means they find out what the Bible says and they try really hard to do it. The other people are the people who live to please themselves. These are the people who really, really, really want to please the Lord. They really, really, really want to please the Lord. We mess up, we fail, we fall, but we really, really, really want to do our business dealings, our, our, our relationships, our, the way we shop. When you get too much money from the cashier at Taco Bell, when, when you find your foot's a little heavy on the you know, gas pedal, and you're a little above the speed limit, and you're, you know, I'm allowed five miles over. Well, if God wants me to not, then, uh, and you try to rein yourself in. You try to hold yourself back. You try to do the things you really don't have to do, but you think maybe God would want you to do it. These are the people who really want to please the Lord. Let's take a quick look at what we don't want to do, okay? I mean, I don't think anybody would intentionally want to move from the simple to the scornful and the stupidful, right? Anybody want to be, don't raise your hand. I'm not even going to look if somebody would raise their hand. Huh? First principle, the simple people, simple people now, again, the good side of simple is, is ignorant. I mean, that, that's not bad. It means you don't know. You're, you're teachable. The bad side of ignorant is that you're gullible. And that you want to move away from gullible. Simple people will swallow everything. They're like babies crawling on the floor. You have to be careful what you leave within range because babies will eat everything. They'll put everything in their mouth. Religious people are like that. When you first get saved, you move into the simple category. You're teachable. And where most people think doctrine is dry, doctrine is what gives you... Doctrine is you getting God's truth into your heart is developing sensitive taste buds. Where you find out that a taco tastes way better than a critter crawling on the floor. <coughs> what are you eating? And the kid's looking at you with something sticking out of its mouth. And you really don't want to know what. Yeah, doctrine, 
truth, getting into God's word and finding out what God's word really says. Not what you want it to say, not what I tell you it says, but what it really says. That helps you develop spiritual taste buds so that what you put in your mouth either tastes sweet because it's from the Lord or it tastes bitter because it's from the world or worse, from the wicked one. I didn't mean to point at you, it was just a gesture. The wicked one. You develop spiritual taste buds so that, yeah, that's cool. I got a little throw up in my mouth right there. Where before you liked it. Before that was good. Never mind, that was a different thing. That tastes awful now. Uh, where was I? The simple, they're ignorant. The ignorant people, again, not, not, not like <coughs> ignorant, I mean they just don't know. That's, that's all I mean by that. They look away from God. They tend to wander off. You know, little babies, you, when they start walking, do you just leave the front door open? <laughs> leave, the, leave the front gate open? No, because they'll look away, they'll wander away. The simple are ignorant and they lack knowledge. Uh, Proverbs 1 verse 4, wisdom will give prudence to those who are simple knowledge and discretion to the young, right? So the ignorant, they lack knowledge. They, they just may not know the Bible. That's, that's not bad. They just need to learn more Bible. The simple are ignorant, and they not only lack knowledge, but they lack depth. Okay, maybe they know about stuff, but do they know what to do with that stuff? Maybe they know a little bit of Bible, but do they know enough that that Bible is actually starting to permeate into their life? 122, how long will you who are simple continue to love your simple ways? God wants you to grow a little bit. You, you may know a little bit of Bible, but do you know how to apply the Bible? People who don't evaluate their lives by the Bible will end up evaluating their lives in terms of what makes sense to them. For example, this little guy says, uh, when I was eight years old, my neighbor's dog uh, was pooing on my yard, and so one day I pooped on his yard. <laughs> now, that made sense to the kid. But as we grow in the Lord, we move beyond that so that we say, hmm, is this a good thing or a bad thing? And we make our decisions based on what, you know, what the Bible says rather than what makes sense to us. Hopefully you're not pooing in anybody's yard. But why do people do things that are so ridiculous to us, but it makes sense to them? Well, because it makes sense to them. You're a believer. You want your standard to be not just what makes sense to you. Not just what makes your preacher happy or what they do in your church. You want your standard to be, what would God do? Would God go poo in the neighbor's yard? Maybe. I don't think so. Think through your responses to situations. Something happens to you. Think through. What would you do in that situation? But think it through before you get there. Think about, what am I going to say? What am I going to do? The simple are ignorant and they lack not only knowledge and depth, but they lack discretion. Proverbs 14, 15 says, the simple believe anything, but the prudent, they give thought to their steps. Prudent people let wisdom come in. Uh, some people just may not know they're supposed to compare their life to the Bible. You're supposed to compare your life to the Bible. How am I doing? How's my scheduling? How's my, uh, my recreational time, my fun time? How am I spending my money? Evaluate everything in terms of what the Bible says, and you will become a person of discretion. You'll learn right and wrong from God's point of view. You'll learn what to put in your mouth spiritually and what to spit out. The simple lack discretion. They may just not know they're supposed to compare their lives uh, to the Bible. What is the next one there? Is this a dear mom and dad, a dear dad? Dear Dad, why do you want to be a vegetarian? Did Mom make you? Did, did, you know, you do not have to listen to her. She is not your boss. <laughs> now, evidently, this kid was eating too many greens, you know, more greens than he wanted to eat. Uh, Dad decides that he's not going to eat meat anymore, and the kid figures, why would Dad not eat hamburgers anymore? Mom must have made him. You know, you don't have to do what she says. She's not your boss. That sounds maybe cute, maybe silly. We do the same thing. We do the same thing. We try to rationalize. That's not a bad thing. That's a smart thing. But if we rationalize according to what makes sense to us, we're going to be missing a bunch of, bunch of stuff. We're not playing with a full deck. I meant it like I said it. We don't have all the information. We don't have all the answers. God wants us to lean in His direction so that when we make a... A judgment call, we're at least leaning in his direction, not leaning in our direction. Because remember, we're, we're trying to move from the progression, not simple to scornful to stupidful, but simple to smart to spiritual. The smart get more biblical knowledge. 
the spiritual learn how to apply that biblical knowledge. So it's not enough to sit around and listen to a bunch of sermons. Trust me, I listen to more than y'all. I listen to a lot of sermons. I read a lot of stuff. I listen to a lot of stuff. Trust me, it hasn't made me any smarter. Well, you probably know that. You don't have to vote and you don't have to amen right there. Listening to a lot of sermons doesn't make you stronger. Doesn't make you smarter. But if, you, if, but if there's a little bit of God's word in that thing and you actually start applying that, to your life, you actually start doing something with it, you're going to grow. The simple are also ignorant in the terms that they, they, they lack restraint. They, they don't stop themselves when they should. 22 verse 3, the prudent see danger and they take refuge. But the simple, they just keep on going and they get hit by the car. They just keep on going and they get bit by the snake. Uh, I used to be a high school teacher, Sunday school teacher. Can you believe that? I used to be a high school Sunday school teacher. And, uh, you know, we had lock-ins, and, you know, I'd take them on field trips. I was spiritual. I thought I was supposed to do all that stuff. And I had, a, I had about 25, 30 kids, and we went out to Rio Park, and we were going to go hiking. How young was I that I would even consider going for a walk? So I took 25, 30 kids out there. We're walking the Rio Park out west, and we're just walking. And I'm telling these kids because I was even, I'm nicer now than I was then. <clears throat> And I'd just given them a big old hairy lecture about, don't be stupid. Look at your feet. You're going to step on a snake. You're out here walking. Duh, 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 duh. Look at your feet. Guess who almost stepped on a snake? <laughs> Actually, the kids say, I stepped on it. They also say they'd never seen an old guy. They'd never seen an old Mexican jump that high and turn that white, <laughs> is what they said, actually. Yeah. Now, if I'd seen the snake... And I kept, yeah, no, I, you know, it wasn't my fault. I didn't see it. I didn't see it. I was so busy warning the children. <laughs> yeah, sometimes we spend a lot of time warning. I'm bad about this. You know, I, I, tell, people all, I tell people all the time, I was telling Lauren the other day, I tell people all the time that I'm, I feel like the, 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 the guy at the uh, road construction site with the slow down stop sign. I don't have a go. You're doing a great job. I, all I have is slow down stop. That's all I have. It's worse. I realized the other day that where, where you have someone like a Joel Osteen who's like a cheerleader and I want to be him when I grow up, I'm the school crossing guard. All I have is a whistle. <laughs> Nobody likes me. Because <clears throat> when you're doing the good thing, I'm not going to say anything. You know, you just, you're cruising 14 or 15. I just look at you. But go 16, <clears throat> I'll blow my whistle. I'm trying to help you restrain yourselves. And those of us who are teaching, sometimes we forget, God wants me to restrain myself. Yeah? You're a teacher. You're influential. People are watching you. People are looking at you. People know who you are. They just may not know they're supposed to change their life to fit the Bible. Maybe they figured out they're supposed to evaluate their lives in terms of the Bible, but they haven't figured out yet they're supposed to change their lives to fit the Bible. Well. The scornful now are insolent. Where the, where the simple are ignorant, the scornful, they're insolent. Insolent is, that's not what you take when you're having health problems. Insolent is, it's arrogant with a worse attitude. Ah, it's, it's like incorrigible. He's insolent. He's, you want to slap them, you know, those. These are not just people who wander away from God like a little one. You have to hold their hand so they won't wander into the street. These are people who deliberately turn away from God. They know where God is. They know where mom and daddy are, and they choose not to go there. They will not go there. This is not the good direction. Confidence is not a bad thing, right? I'm not talking about being confident. Confidence is, you know, good morning. I see my assassins have failed. Yeah, that's confidence. It's from a second grader, I think, or something. Confidence is not a bad thing. But there's a confidence that becomes an arrogance. You know, you can be confident, you can be cocky. You can be, I can't think of anything other than I just want to slap you. You know, it's just, it's just that, that, uh, that insolence. It just, you know everything and you're not going to let anybody help you. The scornful are insolent and they won't listen to instruction. Uh, Proverbs 13, 1, a wise son uh, heeds, will listen to and do his father's instruction, but a mocker will not listen to rebukes. It doesn't matter how much you're correct. It doesn't matter how much you're helped. No, I'm going to do what you say. Psh, you, like that. Psh, you, fill in the blank. Psh, you, yeah. Psh. On you and your house. Psh. 
Yeah, I don't care. You don't scare me. Yeah. You. Yeah, that's awful. It's awful. And, and people who are around people like that all the time get tired of trying to help them. They become, you too. You know, that's not good. Now, it's hard. It's hard to get away from people. It was easy for me to get away from Carl. I just changed jobs. That's pretty bad. To get away from the guy trying to disciple you, I changed jobs. I quit working at Don Ray Outdoor Advertising to get away from the guy who led me to the Lord because he wasn't spiritual enough. <sighs> now, part of that was my attitude. Part of that was his. He needed to grow. I needed to grow. I could have stayed. I left. You're going to make decisions. You're going to make good ones. You're going to make bad decisions. You just want to get more sensitive, not more stupid, right? The scornful are insolent. They won't listen to instruction. A wise son will listen to his father's instruction. But a mocker won't listen to anybody. And they won't appreciate correction. If you try to help them, Proverbs 15, 12. Mockers, the scorners, they resent correction. Go ahead, try to fix me. Go ahead, try to help me. Like that. They avoid the wise. Pretty soon, they just won't hang out with people who try to help them. Oh, you're just nagging. No, you're just not obeying. Yeah. Helping often sounds like nagging, by the way. Yeah. So they avoid the wise. You can see a scorner. You don't even have to wait for them to roll their eyes at you. Just look at the people they listen to. Look at the people they try to hang around with. Do they hang around with people who make them feel better about themselves? Or do they hang around with people who actually make them better? It's a huge difference. The scornful are insolent, and they will not escape destruction. Proverbs 9, 12. If you're wise, your wisdom will reward you. But if you're a mocker, you alone will suffer. Okay, so we have the simple, and then the scornful, and then the what? The stupidful. The stupidful. These people are defiant. And they don't just wander away from God. They don't just turn away from God. They walk away from God. I will not get closer to God. I will get farther away from God. Dear, uh, is it Julian? Dear Julian, have a great day. Love mom. What is his attitude? I will not. <laughs> yeah, that's defiant, man. That's stupidly defiant. Mom, I'm angry at you, and I'm not talking to you today or tomorrow. P.S. All day. P.S.S. I still love you. <sighs> some, some, some people, they're, they're already in the scornful category, but they could still be brought back. They could still be brought back. There's still a little bit of humanity left inside. Yeah. We want to do everything we can to not drive off the people who love us. We want to do everything we can to not run off and scare off and, and, and frustrate the people who really give a rip. They really love us. They're really trying. They're the only ones who still hang out. You know what I mean? They don't have to. They hang out because they love us. Love them. Love them back. Listen to them. The stupid fool are defiant, though, and they reject wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom. They despise instruction. The stupid fool are defiant, and they rejoice in sin. Who would rejoice in sin? A stupid person. A fool. A fool finds pleasure in wicked schemes. But a person of understanding delights in wisdom. The stupid fool, this person is defiant. They refuse to apologize. Really, of all the things God should say, of all the things God should say about a, of all the things that God could say about a fool, one of the things he says is they refuse to ever say, I'm sorry. Proverbs 14, verse 9, fools mock at making amends for sin, but goodwill is found among the upright. They will not apologize. Dear Brody, Miss P made me write you this note. All I want to say I'm sorry for is not being sorry because I tried to feel sorry, but I don't. Signed, Liam. <laughs> Fools will not apologize. The stupid fool are defiant and they will receive judgment. Proverbs 16, 22, prudence is a fountain of life to those who will listen, but folly will bring punishment to fools. Sooner or later, they're going to slam face first into the wall. Now, the simple become scornful by not listening to God. And the scornful become stupidful by not changing for God. If a person will not listen to God's word, and if a person chooses not to change to make their life fit God's word, this is what they're up against. This is where they're going to end up. They just will. They just will. This is the standard. Not the preacher, not mama, not daddy. This is the standard. 
The simple become scornful by not listening to God. The scornful become stupidful by not changing for God. So do we want to be on God's good side or God's bad side? Proverbs 3.33 again. The Lord's curse is upon the house of the wicked, but he blesses the home of the righteous. 34, he mocks proud mockers, but he shows favor to the humble and the oppressed. The wise inherit honor, but fools get only shame. Three quick principles. God will lash out at the sinful. God will lash out at the wicked. God will lash out. Now, you're not old enough to remember back in the days that cars didn't have seat belts and the dashboard was made out of steel and we all had little plastic Jesus with a magnet on the bottom and, yeah. And whenever the kids in the back who were not belted in, maybe they had a little car seat with a little wheel that just, you know, spun around, and it was, didn't hold them anywhere. It just kind of kept them out of the driver's hair for a while. And if the kid did something bad in the back, what would the dad do? He would turn around and smack that kid. That was back in the days when you could do that. Don't make me go back there. You know, you can't reach him, so the kid knows, you know, the, the safe zone where dad can't reach. Yeah. God lashes out at the wicked. He reaches around in the backseat. He'll smack the snot out of you if you're wicked. You don't want to be there. You don't want to be on God's bad side. He has no safe zone. He can reach you. This guy is just flat out sinful. Uh, verse 33, the Lord's curse is on the house of the wicked, but fools, they get only shame. You don't want to be wicked. God will laugh at the Weisenheimer. I needed a W word for scornful. Weisenheimer, how old am I? The, the, the guy who's, you know, is a wise guy. Yeah, he's, he's, he knows everything. This guy, he's smug. He's smug. He's smug. It's bad enough to talk to a, a kid, especially a kid in your family who's smug. It's not fun to teach people. In church. I don't have to do it here, but, you know, there have been preachers who have had to teach people who are just freaky deaky smug. Go ahead, I dare you to try to teach me. They already know what they believe. They're not going to let you change them. They're already spiritual. They already got the truth. Yeah, whatever. God laughs at the person who is smug and is no longer teachable. God mocks proud mockers. I'm talking about people who were in church. Now I'm talking about people who were us. We don't want to go there. We don't want to get to the place where God can no longer teach us anything. I'm not talking about a preacher. I'm talking about learning what the Bible says. But we hear something that doesn't fit our experience. We hear something that doesn't fit our theology. We, we hear something that doesn't work into our doctrine. Change your doctrine if it's in the Bible. Change your theology if it's biblical. Bend your experience around the truth. Don't bend the truth to fit your experience. Well, I know what the Bible says because I know what happened to me is backwards. God will mock you. God will lash out at the wicked. He will laugh at the Weisenheimer, and he will lift up the wise. Where the, the first guy is sinful, that second guy is smug, this guy is sharp. He blesses the home of the righteous. The wise will inherit honor. So, in the dumb and the dangerous direction, the simple will look away from God. The scornful will turn away from God. The stupidful will actually walk away from God. Now, if, if you're one of those who has walked away from God, but you're walking back, good job. You've made some really stupid decisions, but now you're making some pretty sharp decisions. High five. Good job. Good job. I mean, maybe nobody even knows. Maybe you were playing the game pretty well, but you know on the inside. You know. You know. If you're coming back, good, good job. Psalm 111, verse 10, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All who follow his precepts will have good understanding. Listen, God, God wants you to come close. In the good and godly direction, you, you find those who are learning about God and listening to God and living for God. These are the guys who put feet to their faith, right? These are the guys who are moving in the good and godly direction. It's the fear of the Lord. That's the beginning of wisdom. You know people who no longer care what God thinks about? They don't care about what God cares about? Get away from them. Get away from them. But people who want to know what God has to say, that's a good thing. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All who follow his precepts will end up with good understanding. I love you, Mommy. Coming up. Da, 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 da. Dear Mom, you are my favorite Mommy ever. I'm sorry for calling you a piece of poo and said I hate you and I'm not going to my room. I love you, Mommy. Love your daughter, Karen. Now, it was not good that she called her Mommy a piece of poo. But she came back. Mom, I'm sorry. That's a good thing. 
Have you ever messed up? You've never called God a piece of poo, I'm sure. But we've said things. We've done stupid things. Stupid, you know, it, it, maybe it made sense, but okay, now it doesn't make sense. And, and, I'm, and I'm making the 180. I'm coming back to God. And I, and I really I want to be where you are, God. Well, realize where you're wrong with God. Okay, you're wrong with God. Realize where you're wrong. Make it right with God. Get on with life. If preachers would just get off your back, life would be a whole lot easier. It's, it's really not any more difficult than that. Realize where you were wrong with God. So right now, where are you wrong with God? I'm not going to give you time to really think about it, but where are you wrong with God? Make it right. Just, just, just make it right. Get on with life. We want to be on God's good side. I'm going to have Lauren pray. I'm going to have her come, and, and, and I'm going to have her lead you guys in a word of prayer. If you're not sure that you've given your life to Jesus Christ, well, do that. The Bible says Jesus is God. And as the God-man he came, he lived, he died for our sins, was buried, rose from the dead. Have you given your heart and life to the God-man, Jesus Christ? Have you said, Jesus, I give up. I love you and I trust you. You need to get saved. If you've been saved, be obedient. He wants you to be baptized. He wants you to find out what the Bible says and then do it. Get saved, get soaked. Then he wants you to get serious. How do you get serious? You find out what the Bible says and you do it. You just do it. Just do it. Just do it. Just do it. What are you supposed to do? Find out what the Bible says and just do it. I want that to stick in your mind this week, too. Just do it. I want you to walk up to each other this week and just do it. Just do it. Do it. What am I, gonna, what am I supposed to do? Just, just do it. Just do it. Okay? Find out what the Bible says and just do it. I'm on a roll here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm loud. Just do it. Okay, I don't do it as well. I have to practice. All right, let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you again for your word. God, thank you for the book of Proverbs that it was written to give us wisdom, to make wise the simple. God, that doesn't happen accidentally. We know we have to make decisions that will make us more scornful or more stupidful, or it can make us smarter or more spiritual. God, I pray that during the week you would bring to mind the things that Tony said this morning. God, so that when we're on the road or we're at work or we're at school or we're talking to our neighbors or our friends. God, that we would make choices that would move us in a godly direction. We love you, Lord. We praise you. Thank you for giving us opportunity after opportunity after opportunity for making the right choices and for having so much mercy on us when we fail. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Exhausted 
has tore up into rents. When our strength has failed, and the days have done, when we reach the end of our hoarded resources, our Father's forgiving His only begun. His love has no limit and His grace has no measure. His bound has no bound. God, thank you for giving more grace. Thank you for giving us everything we need for this life and the life to come. Thank you for letting us become more and more and more like you, Jesus. I pray that we would move away from that scornful, stupidful area. And God, that we would desire to be smarter in your word and more spiritual as we learn more of your word and we learn to evaluate our life by your word and we learn to to apply your word to our lives god help us become more and more and more and more like jesus thank you for loving us first thank you that we can love you back thank you that we can spend this time together with our our friends and this family of faith thank you for this church thank you for these people in your name we pray and everybody said amen god bless you thanks for coming today